Hey everybody, welcome back to the Kit Cave. Hope you all had a very, uh, a very nice festive Christmas break and have been enjoying the time off. Um, apologies for the lack of updates with this, with this, this, uh, uh, with this project I've been working on. Um, just been quite busy over the festive periods, as I'm sure a lot of us have been um, sorting things like doing odd jobs at home, that kind of thing. A um, little bit busier than I was uh, anticipating to be, but I have been able to put some work in uh to this ongoing project so a uh, quick video for you all just to show the um the progress i've made so far to my uh, one sixth scale um dr beverly crusher um working projects uh, pro project uh, get your words out uh, model kit working here in blender so uh just a reminder this is going to be a 3d printed model a fully articulated figurine um of Dr. Beverly Crusher from Star Trek The Next Generation. So starting here with uh, good old Gates McFadden here. Um, yeah, still working on the, on the head here. Uh, still working on the head. It's been a lot of the last few days I've been working a lot to get some of the, uh, some refining of the, the facial features here. Um, you may have noticed here as well, I've been able to get the, uh, the eyebrows sculpted in. Need a little bit more work done to them because they're looking a little bit, a uh, little bit blocky. But that's okay i'll just go through and just soften up these edges just just a little bit um but it, it's looking pretty good looking pretty good now it doesn't look like i've done that much uh since the uh since the first initial video uh, to begin this series i need to soften that bit a little bit um but i have um been working a lot on trying to get this as well i want this to be a, a a a true likeness as best as i can of gates mcfadden herself now of course when you're you're sculpting we all know what what gates mcfadden looks like we all know what patrick stewart looks like we all know what tom cruise looks like we all know what you know how arnold schwarzenegger looks of course we do in our own heads when we compare our own image that we have in our mindset of how somebody looks to an actual photograph of them then we can start to see that what we envisage is is slightly different as a true portrayal. So of course, you know, I've been referencing a lot of uh, a lot of screenshots, a lot of been screen grabbing a lot a lot of pictures of Gates McFadden here, Gates McFadden from from Pinterest is a really good resource for this, and then comparing. I've been working on some of the little subtleties um, to generate the face. Part of the process of when I do the do this sculpting, uh, and as I learn to do it and learn more each time I'm using Blender, I, I make backups. Of the sculpt so i'll do a bit of sculpting i'll get to a point and i think yeah i'm happy with what i've done here so if i'm working on the nose for example and i'll back this model up and what i mean by backing it up is i'll actually make a duplicate so i've got multiple duplicates of this so if i turn this one off and i've got this one titled gates head primary this is the primary model that i'm sculpting on turn that one off and there's a backup okay because i duplicated this model and it's titled it Gates Head Backup. So at each stage, once I've sculpted a bit, I'll delete the previous backup model, reduplicate this head again, uh, which is easily done just by selecting it, right clicking, duplicate object, and then renaming it as a backup. And that's kind of how I go through in stages doing this. The reason for that is that if I should do a bit of modeling and I completely mess up, that's fine. Just delete it off, go to your backup. Make a backup of your backup, and then make one of them your primary model and carry on. It's it, it, one of the beauty, the beauties of, of, of digital sculpting. Obviously, you know, years ago when I when I was sculpting using traditional media faces, you know, polymer clays and clays and that kind of thing. If you made a mistake, oh my god, trying to sort that mistake out was a bit of a nightmare. So a lot easier here. So this is this is an earlier rendition. Um, this was just before Christmas. This is the stage that I was at. Uh, before Christmas, the eyes here are still separate pieces on this one, but there they are. Let's put that one in. Come on, there we are. Um, and it's from this backup model that's where I, what I've been working on uh, over the last week or so to get to turn those off again to get to the primary one here. Now, what I mean by the differences I've been working on, it's things like here the bottom jaw needed a bit of work initially this bottom jaw was a little bit too it was the edges here it's a little bit too close in so i had to extend out a little bit and again looking at the reference images that i had the cheekbones 
in an actual fact, if I just do it as an exercise, if I bring my backup model here, I'll highlight that one and I'll move it off to the side, you can actually start to see the, the, the differences. You start to see some of the differences here. And it's these subtle differences that make that make a break uh, what a face looks like. So you can see here the cheekbones on the original sculpt, the cheekbones here too extended. They were too far out. Going back to reference images, they're a little bit shallower. So I worked here to to bring these cheekbones in. Same here with the eyebrow ridges, right at the top here and over this side, they were extending out too much, too pronounced. So back to the reference images, the photographs, came over to the sculpt and flattened them out a little bit. Flattened them out a little, uh, flattened them down more so then they, they weren't sticking out too much. The eyebrows here, uh, working on the, not the eyebrows, sorry, the eyelids needed a bit of work, so they've been done. And it's all these subtle little things here that, that make a break what a, uh, what the face will look like. Now, again, I'm not going for, you know, uber detail on this sculpt, but I want it to be accurate. I want it to be at least, you know, 95% accurate rendition. Again, here we can see the jaw. Slight differences here with the bottom of the jaw. And again, with the jaw line being slightly different. Okay, so working on this to push the vertices around using the, the inflate tool, using the grab tool, the smooth brush to, to manipulate uh, this sculpt. And again, always looking at reference images here of Gates herself, which as we can see here, I've got absolutely tons of the bloody things. All different angles. And this is, this is you know, one of the important steps, certainly when you're trying to model a face. Come on, is it going to load up? No, it isn't. Now you're always looking at these reference images from all different angles come on load up he's thinking about it to try and get this as accurate there you go to try and get this as accurate as possible so we can see here look the eyebrows are not quite as pronounced as my original sculpt was the cheekbones she's got very high pronounced cheekbones but again they weren't sticking out that much the jawline and it's these subtle little differences that i've been trying to to mimic here in the sculpt to get it just that little bit more accurate. Another thing that I noticed as well, certainly on pictures where you, you see the head on an angle here, uh, trying to replicate it, it was the side of the forehead right here. On the original backup sculpt, the original version, this is a little bit too far in. You actually, if you move it like that, see with the, the, the eyebrow being quite pronounced, it's a bit shallow at the top here. So it's a little bit here on the side of this head, which was sculpted. It was just inflated. Use the inflate tool in sculpt mode just to pull the side of this head out a little bit more to match it a little bit better. And again, going through all those reference images. And it's these little subtle differences that I've been working on uh, with this with this head to try and get it as, as accurate as I can to uh, you know, a portrayal of Gates McFadden. And it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. I'll turn that one off as my backup. I don't need this one anymore. This this actual backup model can be deleted now because I've actually created a second. I've actually got three. There's another one here. Another backup model. There we go. So I've got two different backup models here. So this is this basic one before can actually go now. Uh, this one here, this one can now be deleted. Not needed anymore. I might keep it. I might keep it and use it for you know a head sculpt or for a different character later on. I don't know. I probably will. I'll probably export it, keep it. You know, why not? But that's where I am. That's where I am, everybody. So eyebrows have been sculpted in as well. Uh, I'll work on the edges here just to get them a little bit uh, rougher because they're looking a, a bit blocky. Um, little trick that I did with this one for the eyebrows. Um, I can get it to work going to sculpt mode here what i did to, to get these eyebrows sculpted in very very quite simply i used the mask tool so i selected the mask tool a bit of radius down here and just to demonstrate and what i did initially i used the mask tool like a paintbrush and i actually used it to uh, 
Okay, doesn't seem to want to be working for me. Oh, they're over there. Whatever. Yeah, I'm on this one. Sorry, everybody. Let me just go back to right there. Selected. Not mode. Mass. I might actually use the mask tool here. Oh, yeah, bloody rugby. Anyway, I use the the mask the masking tool to to basically paint the line of the eyebrow. Okay, so I painted it on. Something weird's going on. My computer's not playing today. Um, but I painted, used the mask tool to paint this line on. Oh, it's because I've got it on the minus. Come on, Steve. <laughs> That's why it's not working. You can see this is why it takes me so long in Blender. I'm still learning it. So yeah, so there we go. So I used it to, to paint, basically, um, in this fashion, like a paintbrush, initially, to paint the shape of the eye, the eyebrow itself. Okay, so like, like a paint tool. Okay, I'm just doing it roughly just to show the process here. So I painted that in like that. Yeah, what I then did, I did, you know, I just inverted that. So I just, uh, I'm in the dark here. So control I, I inverted it. And then again, worked to refine the shape a little bit more using the mask tool, like a paintbrush, to paint the shape of the, of the eyebrow in. Okay, then what I did to get the eyebrow ridge here, to get it raised, I came up, um, I probably used just the draw tool. I think it was, or even the clay tool, one of the top tools over here, just the clay, made this really, really large. So it did the uh, the radius really large, brought the strength down, and literally just went over here, which meant that it, it raised the area um, between the mass to bring it up. Then I simply went to the draw sharp tool, hit the minus button, and just did some of these little divots here, created some of the divots here to simulate that it's, that it's actual hair, then hit it over with the... Uh, uh, with the smooth tool just to smooth it down um, to get those eyebrows in. So a very, very effective uh, and quick method of, 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 of doing that. I'm just undoing everything now. I'm not going to save this one anyway uh, when I shut it down. But there we go. So the eyebrows are done. Lastly, update for this, for this figure. What else I've been working on was here. The last thing to do was the ears. And again, what I've done with the ears, we can see here, I've just started to sculpt in just the very, very basic shape of an ear with the basic form going into the ear here. Now, again, I want this to be as accurate to Gates McFadden's as I can. So I've gone back to my reference images and I've started to actually look at Gate, you know, any image that I can see that shows the shape and, and, and design of, of, of Gates McFadden's ear. Now, OK, for all intents and purposes, the, the ear is, is there. Needs a little bit more work just to you know smooth it out a little bit, make it a little bit less bumpy. It's an ear. There we go. It does the job, but it's not a Gates McFadden ear. It's not accurate to the actor her, uh, actor herself. Um, as I said, I want this to try and be at least ninety five percent accurate. And what I noticed looking at her ears, if I put the ear in this profile here, you can actually see this inner bit of her ear just here, the inner lobe as I call it. It actually extends out quite a bit. And again, if I go back to my reference image, you can kind of see it just there. You see how the inner part of the ear really extends out quite far. And again, if I start to scroll through some of the images, here's another good one. You can actually see the shape of the ears that comes down here and here. And this is what I'm going to try and replicate these lines as we go through. Um, there's another good picture. I'll move this one into frame. You can see again the shape here. This inner part right here extends out quite far. From the actual ear itself so it's this bit this bit right here will need to be sculpted so it comes quite out quite far to match what we actually see of the actor probably this lobe the back lobe here this bit here can probably be uh, moved in a little bit as well so it'll be sculpted in that way and again just very simply using the grab tool um, to do this I, I think to begin with uh, turn the strength down and just start to manipulate things, grab it a little bit. So like here, I can start to move it out. Yeah, I'll probably move that bit in as I start to go and start to work on this again to get this a, a, a true reflection of her ear. So another good reference image just there to, to use. And again, moving on, you can see here I've built up a big bank 
which really does help with looking at the, the features of the face, the dimensions as, as I'm sculpting. Um, you can see another really good one. There you go. Again, you can see it there. It shows us the good shape um, of the ear itself. Oh, there's a Wonder Woman outfit there. I don't know quite know why I got that, but there we are. There you go. Another one. Another good shape there. So that's kind of where I'm at, is working on these ears. Uh, once they're done, once the sculpting to the ears have, have been done and finalised, and I'm happy with it, and again, as I go through, it's, it's creating backups um, of this model. That's pretty much the head the head part done. All that needs to be done at that stage then is just work on the underneath section here to get this ready for having the actual uh, the barbell uh, uh, the barbell joint to be put into place uh, and bullioned in uh, and ready to go. Another process that I'll do once this head is completely finished is I will go over to the uh, the 3D checker. Oh, it's taken it off because I'm in sculpt mode. I'll go back to object mode, go over to my 3D print tool here and just check everything, um, clean this up. There is going to be some of the um, topology here of the face sculpt that will need to be cleaned up. So there will be some mesh errors, but it's very easy to do. Um, something that I like to do when I'm getting models ready for 3D printing, because I always, you know, a lot of people export these models as, as STL files. When we export as STLs, although we're working in, we're working in quads here in Blender, they will get automatically converted to triangles. And I kind of do that manually before I export anything. Um, I find that going to changing this whole thing from quads into triangles makes it a lot easier and eliminates quite a, quite a lot of some of the, the errors that can show up. And it makes it easier actually to, to highlight some of the, the, the mesh errors and sort them out. Um, and it's a necessary, a necessary step to do. There, there is, there is going to be errors here as we sculpt. Um, and that's where this, this check tool comes into play using the 3D print, the, you know, the check all function. There's going to be some, um, some faces that are overlapping um, or intersecting, but they're, they're really straightforward to, to, to sort out. And so it's a little bit of a cleanup job. Um, and I'll get this one fully ready. Once that's completely done, and this is, model is basically ready to, to be exported, then that's it. I can then start to move on to the rest of, of this project, which is then start to sculpt the main body. Of course, it will be focusing on the neck piece, get the neck sculpted in, and get the joints uh, worked out there, then onto the main part, um, the arms, you know, the upper body, um, the mid torso, all that kind of thing. Um, ready to go and the good thing is you doing the uh doing the grogu model uh, a couple of months ago i already have now a, a, a mindset of the process uh to go through to get this one done um but it's turning out well everybody it's looking good i'm happy with it i'm pleased i'm, I'm glad i spent the time just to spend some time to go through the reference images and just do some of the subtle changes here just to make it a little bit more accurate because it's looking a lot more like gates mcfadden um, a true likeness and don't get me wrong this is a good likeness here this this original backup that is a very good likeness of, of her, but it's not entirely 100% accurate. This isn't 100% accurate either, but I'm trying to get it as close as I possibly can. Um, and I think this version here is looking a lot, a lot better, a lot better. And again, you can see it right there, right there where the cheekbone here, I'm just trying to highlight here, the cheekbone's extending out quite far and that was a bit too far. And so I flattened it down. Um, Flattened it down a little bit, pulled it back in. But look, looking, looking good, looking good, looking good. Very pleased with this. And again, you know, I'm not setting myself a time limit. I haven't set myself a, a time limit as to when to I want to get this finished. It will be finished whenever it gets finished. So I'm not going to rush it. Take the time, and that's an important thing. And I believe, you know, um, somebody else already mentioned this i think it was um boyd over on trackworks um i like watching trackwork videos i'm a subscriber to his channel he builds you know similarly a lot of the star trek models your physical models and he mentioned something it was a really good tip uh, that boyd over at trackworks said whenever you're doing any sort of project whether it's a physical model build um you know a sci-fi model kit or a digital build like this don't set yourself a time limit because you're just putting pressure on yourself it takes however long it takes you know um, to get it done and spend the time spend the time don't rush it and keep checking 
And if you're doing faces, keep going back to your reference images. They're absolutely invaluable. Check everything. Check, check, look, look at the size of the face, look at the features, and play around with it. But there we go. Sorry for the, uh, the rambling and the long video, but that's just to show you where I am with this process. So all that's left to do then really for this model is just do the ears, get them more accurate to Gates McFadden herself. And then it's a case of then I can start to get this, uh, get this model, the underneath ready and sorted out for the, uh, the barbell joint that we'll, we'll go into here for this figurine. And then lastly, it's just do a little bit of mesh cleanup on here. And this is pretty much ready to go uh, to be 3D printed. And what I'll probably do is I probably will do a little test print on this just to see how it comes out um, before anything else. And then after that, it's onward to the actual, the body itself. And again, the, the articulation to get this one done. Let's get the hair on her. There you go. There she is, Dr. Bevy Crusher. There you are. Hello, darling. Looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. I'm very pleased with this so far. Very pleased. And again, as ever, always doing my backups all the way through, just in case I should ever make a catastrophic error and I've got a backup to go into. But there we go. So thanks for watching, everybody. Sorry, I always pause at the end of the videos. I do apologize. Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, again, thanks for everybody that subscribed to the channels and those of you that hit the like buttons. Again, I'm, I'm not going to ask people to do it. It's your choice, but it is very much appreciated for those that that, that do. Um, again, if you, if you happen to be watching this video in the new year, have a very, very uh, happy New Year's Eve. Uh, please drink responsibly, but ultimately enjoy yourselves you know the last three years that we we've gone through jesus we need <laughs> we need a bit of we need a bit of uh, um a bit of merriment and a bit of release um as we go through but please enjoy uh, your new year's eve responsibly have a fantastic new year and a happy new year to everybody and i hope it's, it's long and prosperous for, for all of you take care everybody i'll be back soon with another update once i've got the ears sculpted um have a good one. Enjoy the rest of your, your day and your weekend, and I'll, and I'll catch you all soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.